Hi, I'm Dave Henning with the Fresh Start Podcast, fresh ideas for business and personal growth. And I have a guest today that you're really going to enjoy what she has to say. Monty Homer from the Brisbane, Australia area. She is the queen of content creation. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. International best-selling author. You've been in business 23 years, created 13 successful businesses. You've uh, written some books that have been published in bestsellers in three countries and three categories. So let's talk about business. And I really want to uh, dive right in here. Is uh, Tell me a little bit about your background. Where did you come from and how did you get to this place where you are now, Monty? Well, I got to this place through blood, sweat and tears, basically. I, I grew up in a very poor environment, um, a very abusive environment. Uh, my mother did her absolute best, raising three girls on her own. My father was around, but he worked nights, so basically he wasn't around pretty much my entire childhood. Um, and so my mum did it very hard. She also suffered from debilitating, like, depression and she had no self-esteem, no self-worth, no self-confidence. And so you can't instill that into other people if you don't have those skills yourself, right? Right. Yeah. And so we grew up, like, not believing in ourselves, not believing we were worthy, not believing that, you know, we would amount to anything in our lives, really. And really it's only through hard work and the, the, the things that were put in my path that have steered me in the direction I've gone, that I've been able to create the life I've created for myself. That's fantastic. As I mentioned, I, uh, I kind of grew up not in a really poor, poor family, but blue collar family, lovely parents. My dad died very young and that was a difficult transition, but I, I was really blessed with good parents. But nevertheless, um, I, did, I really struggled with self-esteem and some, you know, just some things that happened along the way and, and uh, those kinds of self-sabotage issues, if I could put it that way. What was your biggest self-sabotage? Oh, gosh, there's, there's a few of them. Uh, the biggest one ever was probably a business that I owned uh, back about 13, 14 years ago. Uh, I, I was a lot cleverer, if that's the right word, <laughs> than I gave myself credit for. Do you know what I mean? So I was already running one business successfully um, and I was pregnant with my son. And I decided that I didn't want to buy baby products. I didn't want to spend all that money on baby stuff, do you know. So my, my focus was to come up with a way that I could have it paid for me. And so I actually imported a range of cloth diapers. Uh, they had the Velcro on them, so they were easy to do up. I'd done some research. I found that there was very low competition in New Zealand where I was at the time. So I, I looked at what the competition was doing and they were doing like plain white nappies that were um, also diapers that were unbranded. And um, so I decided to import bright colours and rainbows and like, you know, and, and like, you know, flowers and dogs and kittens and all kinds of things and I branded it my baby. Uh, it was no, it was just basically choosing what you wanted to order rather than just the plain white. That was the only difference. It wasn't a huge thing. And the self-sabotage came in four years after I started this business. It was earning me two full-time wages a week for an hour's work a day. And, see, by that stage I had two young children. I had, like, you know, a three-year-old and I had, like, an 18-month-old. So it gave me the income I needed on its own uh, whilst I was raising my children. So it was an amazing business. And to cut a long story short, one day a woman complimented me like you wouldn't believe about how amazing my product was but because I didn't believe in myself and because I was so afraid that they might find out that I just fluked it I went home that day and put the business up for sale for a third of its value and sold it within 24 hours just needed to get out I needed to escape how's that for self-sabotage oh 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 my goodness yes absolutely wow yeah so looking back let me ask you this what are you what would you or what should you have done differently? Well, if I'd been where I am now, I would have taken the compliment on board and it would have spurred me to do even better. Rather than sell it, I would have realised what a gold mine I was sitting on. And it hasn't been the first gold mine, if you know what I mean. There's been a few little ones along the way. Okay. Uh, if I'd realised what I was sitting on um, and I had the confidence to go, you know what, that's really awesome, how can I do better? 
And that's what I actually ask myself now. I'm, I'm doing exceptionally well in my, in my current business. Um, but every day I think to myself, how can I help that client more? How can I be, you know, a better person or a better supporter and supplier for that client? And I think that's why I'm doing so well now. Yes, uh, having worked in radio where I got a full-time job working a four-hour shift on the air, I came up with this blog idea for making full-time money for part-time work was my blog, mm -hmm. which you mm -hmm. were just reminded of me of that with what you were able to create uh, mm -hmm. and start a business really from, from scratch, and you did it. In the midst of that, is there a particular uh, point at which you could say, you know, what the turning point was for you to really change your mindset and get things straightened around so where you believed in yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I mean, it was obviously a, a journey that I was on. Um, the, the real turning point, though, and there's a bit of a backstory to this, so it pains me a little to admit it, okay, but, you know, is for nearly four years ago now when I, I first walked into a NLP training room, like Neuro Linguistic Programming, now, right. I can tell you, I entered that room kicking and screaming. I did not want to be there. I thought that the trainer was a complete idiot. And the funny thing is I've done a full 180 on that now. I'm back to think he's a complete idiot, but that's okay because he served his purpose. <laughs> um, but it changed my world. It completely changed my world. I mean, here I went in with, like, attitude like this, like, you know, no one, no, you're an idiot, go away. I'm only here because I, I was only there because a friend of mine refused to get off the phone until I booked and paid. Wow. Another friend wow. of mine refused. Like the phone call went for like half an hour. It was like, Marnie, pick up the phone and call him. Marnie, I'm not getting off this phone until you pick up the phone. And he promised me you're going to do it. And it's like, fine, I'll call him, you know. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, it was exactly like that. And I did it. Um <laughs> The trainer sucked, but it was the best thing I did in my life. Wow. That's an interesting thing that you just said, quite frankly, that you were able to change and garner information that was valuable to you in spite of the, uh, the, the trainer being not that, not that spectacular. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. that, that is a lesson to be learned when you think about it, that and I've been the same way, you know, the, the closed stance, oh, brother, you know, what's this all about? But the lesson to be learned there from my way of thinking is that you can learn from anybody and everybody if, you're, if you are open to listening and at least receiving the core of the message, the value of that. So having said that, what's your biggest takeaway in terms of what, what did you learn from that experience? Well, it's, it's, I, I thought that was coming next because interestingly enough, he was the teacher for the lesson of the need for internal validation. Oh. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And this is by far one of the biggest lessons I had in my life. So the story goes that he, he swayed me on that course because, you know, NLP is good at, like, convincing people, and, and he swayed me. And my opinion of him changed um, to the point where we actually became quite good friends, the two of us. And I would hear from him every single day. Every day I would get messages saying, you're amazing, you're incredible, go power woman, yes, you can do this, do you know. Every day these messages would come and there was banter back and forth between us and we developed a really close friendship um, to the point where for the first time in my life in a very, very long time apart from my husband, I actually, I actually gave in. Do you know what I mean? I gave him my heart and my soul as a friend only, but I, I really gave him that. Do you know what I mean? That's like I got to that point where it was just like, yes, I'm safe. I'm This guy's got me. You know, he's, he's there for me. My husband was fully aware of everything that was going on. He was happy with it because he knew where I was coming from. So there was nothing, you know, wrong in the situation, but it's just he was, he was my best friend in the whole world. Do you know what I mean? And it got to the point where I found myself relying on that validation. Like every day it would come in, but then sometimes it wouldn't. And I'd find myself searching, like, oh, where are you? Hello, woo, on the computer, you know, where are you? Because where's my validation? And then all of a sudden, just out of the blue, like one day, just months later, months later this went on for, he ended it. He, he cut ties completely. 
just got a phone call one day and was told basically that was it, go away, don't, you know, don't message me, don't, like, you know. And it's like, wow. Ouch, that hurts. Oh, my gosh, it crushed me. It absolutely crushed me to my core because I had totally and utterly, you know, I'd surrendered. I had absolutely surrendered to this soul who I believed was going to be there for me, you know, for the rest of my life. He told me that. He told me that he he loved me. He told me that he was going to be there for me. And then all of a sudden one day he was gone. Yeah. And all of a sudden I, I realised that, oh, the huge hole was left in my life because all of a sudden all that validation I was getting. Yes wasn't coming from where and of course I fought and I kicked and I did everything I could to try and keep it but you know it's like I had to eventually learn that I had to let go and then I had to find it within myself right yes so, now you can see why I think he's an idiot again but <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's kind of like on, on, a, on, on a lighter way it's kind of like seeing how many likes you got on Facebook like the validation yes. of, well, how many people liked my story today? How many? Mm-hmm. I got to put some more stories up to see if how many. I'm counting up the likes, and and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's just not healthy. No, it's not. It's really not healthy to the point where with this particular situation, and it's been such a massive lesson for me. Do you know, it really has. And like, yes, I am grateful for the lesson. I'm not grateful for the experience. I'm grateful for the lesson, if you understand what I'm saying there. Of course. You know, it, it got to the stage where I would post something on Facebook just to show how much validation I was getting from this one person. I yeah. could put a post on Facebook and I would sit there and I'd go, okay, five, four, three, two, one, and bang, there'd be a love heart or there'd be a you're awesome or, you know, and that was the kind of validation that I was getting. So when you're talking about those likes and comments, I used to post just to get that reaction. There you go. Exactly yeah. what we're talking about. So where are you today? You're very successful. What are you focusing on in your business right now? You've, I, I love copywriting. I actually at one time went to the Artists and Writers Institute um, big weekend down in Delray Beach, Florida, and spent some time with all these fantastic speakers. And co- you know, I was a copywriter for many, many years in the radio business. I always loved that kind of stuff. And, and so that's what you do, right? What's, is that mm-hmm. kind of the, the main crux of your business? You've done so many cool things, I must say. I, I've watched some of your videos. I've looked at your bio. Very cool. So the, it sounds like you really have a passion for copywriting. Am I right? Yeah, I really do. And, again, it was just one of those things that I stumbled into, like, early last year, 2020. Um, I gained one of those flashy things that show up on Facebook and saying, you know, Look at me, look at me. And it was, of course, teaching me how to get articles published, which is how the journey actually started because I, I would write these articles and they'd get accepted. Wow. And wow. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know? uh-huh. And then all of a sudden I, I got the urge, well, if I can do that, I can write a book. And with, you know, COVID coming out, I did that. I sat down over a weekend um, so it was written in less than 24 hours because, you know, eight, eight hours a day. Literally, my family was like putting food under the door, like, you know, because like, <laughs> they knew that I was in creative mode and they knew when mum's in creative mode, just let her go, you know. So, I mean, awesome family, awesome kids. Um, and I wrote that within 24 hours. And so then I had this book with this nine step blueprint on how to create an income stream from scratch because I'd clearly done it many times. Wow. And I'm thinking, now what do I do? Do you know? Because that's the thing. It's like, okay, so I've got this book. I've actually finally finished one. It's like the third book I'd written. But because of my self-sabotaging, I get three quarters of the way through and go, oh, no one will like that. Delete. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? So I actually had this book. And, like, the universe always jumps in. When, when you've got a, a target and a goal, the universe always provides. And I end up doing a trade share with a, with a girlfriend of mine who wanted to learn how to get articles published online. And she was a publisher. Oh, wow. Wow, really? So we really? trades, so it didn't cost us anything, either of us. We just, you know, shared each other's knowledge. And um, she got me published, and then it went to number one in three countries and three categories, and I taught her how to get articles published. So it was like, you know, contracted, it was all done fairly, and we both traded skills. So that's how I became an author and that's number fantastic. one international best. It is, yeah. It's just the universe just provided that. You know, she was already a contact. But she approached me about the idea, and it's like, well, there you go. That solves the problem. 
Very good. Yeah, the and, relationships, um, the relationships. That I found that with all this podcasting I've been doing, the connections that I've mm-hmm. had and even been brought some very interesting, unique people all over the mm. world it's just been mm. amazing what you can what i'm learning new things every day from people that i talk to and and sharing some of the things that i've experienced in my life many uh, how can i help you well probably the easiest way you can help me is to um tell people about my book uh lockdown took my income which is a nine-step blueprint to creating an income stream from scratch um i've proven that it works because my latest business was built uh, with a video series that I did showing everyone how it could be done. Um, so this business is now heading towards a multi-million dollar business um, in eight months. So, like, that's pretty amazing. I, I've really hit, hit the target this time. I've really hit the mark this time. Um, and so that's probably the best way, getting people, you know, letting people know to connect with me on LinkedIn. That's where I like to hang out or visiting our website at Copywriters International. They're the best places that um, people can find me. And where can they find the, the book, Marnie? Uh, they'll find that on my website at Copywriters International. If they have a look at the top banner, it's sitting right there for them to grab. Excellent, excellent. I'm so grateful for having you as my guest today. And I always ask one last question if you know anything about me. What was the very first job you ever had when you were a kid? Very first job I ever had. Real one, like paying one, or are we talking? Whatever you want, a teenager or a child, uh, I've had all kinds of amazing stories. Okay. Well, mine's not that amazing. I worked at a – I got a job on my 15th birthday. It's a day you can, you can start work at 15. I went to the interview on the day before my 15th birthday, so I started work in a department store in the Manchester section over the school holidays, and I absolutely hated it. <laughs> I had a few jobs like that. Yes, I worked in a gift shop with two ladies that wanted me to follow the customers around and talk to them the entire time they wanted to shop. And I, I think I lasted about one day on that particular job. But yeah, we've always had those jobs that we've, that we've either hated or I've been fired a few times. Don't tell anybody. I wasn't you cut out. I learned that I wasn't cut out for the grocery business as a career when I was 16 for some reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Huh. We've always I've been had fired a few times as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> and look at us now, fantastic. Well, uh, uh, Mani, thank you for for being my guest today, and I will make sure that we uh, that we make sure that people can find your book, your website, your LinkedIn page. And I'm really grateful. Uh, it's actually uh, tomorrow morning over there, I believe, compared to our 16 hours ahead of you here. Yes, that's correct. It's it's 10 10 30 here in the morning. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Great to meet you. And I appreciate getting this message out about, especially about changing your viewpoint on life and jettisoning off some of the self-limiting beliefs that we all can have if we're not careful. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Great to be with you. No problem. Thank you.